Today, I am Grace and Lubao, and our topic is all about blue looks. In this section, we'll give you an overview of the most common environmental violations under the blue laws, referring to the color of the seas, oceans, and other bodies of water. Blue laws refer to laws which deal with the protection, conservation, and utilization of waters, marine life, and aquatic resources. Blue laws encompass both inland waters, such as rivers, lakes, and streams, and the seas and the oceans, whether part of the country's territory or not. Now, let's talk about a case study example relating to blue laws. So the small fish versus the big fish. Early in the morning before dawn, a group of fisher fox set out to sea to look for the catch of the day. Reaching their chosen area, they prepared the caster nets. From their location, they could see the faint lights of other fishing boats. As they continued to set up their nets, they hear the distant sound of explosions coming from one of the boats farther off. Not wanting any trouble, they choose to ignore it and begin to fish. The fisher folk continue with their normal routine every day. While they continue to hear the sounds of explosions from distant boats, which even increased as time went by. As the weeks passed, they noticed that their catch was getting smaller. Most significantly, they noticed that the corals where the fish live and breed were slowly being destroyed, presumably because of the explosions they heard. They knew something was wrong and that they needed to report this immediately lest they lose their only source of income and livelihood. Now let's proceed to the laws connecting with the case study. The first law is the Philippine Fisheries Code of 1998. The primary law in fisheries and aquatic resources in the Philippines is RA number 8550 or the Philippine Fisheries Code of 1998. This law seeks to manage the country's fishery and aquatic resources in a manner consistent with an integrated coastal area management and to protect the right of fisher fact, especially of the local communities. The law applies to all Philippine waters, including the country's exclusive economic zone, or EEZ, and continent shelf. Since the Philippines is an archipelago, our fisheries laws and other blue laws in general are crucial in protecting our waters and marine resources. Now let's proceed to the law specifically punishes the following acts most commonly violated. The first one is poaching. Poaching is simply the fishing by foreigners or by a foreign vessel within Philippine waters or Philippine territory. The law only allows Filipinos to use and benefit from the marine resources of the country. In Philippine waters, Philippine waters include all bodies of water within the Philippine territory such as lakes, rivers, streams, creeks, brooks, ponds, swamps, lagoons, gulfs, bays, and seas, and other bodies of water now existing or which may hereafter exist in the provinces, cities, municipalities, and barangays, and the waters around, between and connecting the islands of the archipelago, regardless of their breadth and dimensions, the territorial sea, the sea beds, the insular shelves, and all other waters over which the Philippines has sovereignty and jurisdiction, including the 200 nautical miles exclusive economic zone and the continental shelves. The second law specifically punishes is called fishing through illegal. Fishing through illegal means can be done through any of the following. So use or position of explosives, noxious and poisonous substances and electricity, use of fine mesh net except for certain species, 
use of acting fishing gear in municipal waters at base or fishery management areas, fishing with gear or methods that destroys coral reefs and other marine habitats such as Moro Ami, and use of super lights. Next is fishing in prohibited and restricted areas. This type of violation can be any one of the following. In the first instance, commercial fishing in overexploited areas, fishing in overfish areas and during close season, fishing in areas declared as fishery reserves, refugees and sanctuaries, and violation of catch ceilings. The fourth law specifically punishes is called illegal gathering, possessing, catching, and selling of certain marine species. The violations covered here are the following. So first is gathering sale or export of precious and semi-precious corals. Next is gathering, selling, or exporting white sand, silica, pebbles, and other substances of the marine habitat. And the last one is fishing of rare, threatened, and endangered species. The fifth law specifically punishes is called aquatic pollution. Aquatic pollution, this violation has been defined in RA number 8550 as the introduction by human or machine, directly or indirectly, of substances or energy to the aquatic environment which result or is likely to result in such deleterious effects as to harm the marine environment and human health. It includes activities such as fishing and navigation, transportation, and deforestation. Lastly is construction and operation of fish pens without a license or permit and obstruction to navigation or flow and ebb of tide in any stream, river, lake, or bay. And now, let's proceed to the next topic entitled the Laguna Lake Development Authority or LLDA Act. The LLDA was established through RA number 4850 in 1966 as a quasi-government agency that leads, promotes, and accelerates sustainable development in the Laguna de Bay region. Regulatory and law enforcement functions are carried out with provisions on environmental management, particularly on water quality monitoring, conservation of natural resources, and community-based natural resource management. Within the Laguna Lake area, the LLDA has jurisdiction and authority over the enforcement of environmental laws, rules, and regulations. In Section 39A of RA No. 4850 provides for the Penal and Civil Liability Clause of the X. The LLDA Board has issued several resolutions providing for the violations and the corresponding penalties. The law specifically punishes the following acts most commonly violated in general prohibitions. So under the prohibitions include undertaking development or a project without LLDA clearance, disposal or throwing of any organic or inorganic substance in water form that causes pollution, disposal of toxic and or hazardous substances without authorization from the LLDA. Now let's proceed to the significant Supreme Court decisions. The following significant Supreme Court cases which will aid your understanding of law laws are Tano v. Socrates, People of the Philippines v. Vergara, Hizon v. Court of Appeals, Laguna Lake Development Authority v. Court of Appeals et al. Through elevating related cases, significant Supreme Court decisions, particularly in the protection of all marine resources, here is the Tanyo v. Socrates case. This is the case that leads the provincial government of Palawan and the Sangguniang Panaluwigan 
to that enactment of a resolution prohibiting the catching, gathering, possessing, buying, selling, and shipment of a several species of live marine coral dwellings aquatic resources from January 1, 1993 to January 1, 1998, in and coming from Palawan waters. And so petitioners filed a special civil action for certiorari and prohibition, praying that the court declare the seed ordinances and resolutions as unconstitutional on the ground that the seed ordinances deprived them of the due process of law, their livelihood, and unduly restricted them from the practice of their trade. In conclusion, Judge Belosellio, in a dissenting opinion, expressed the view that in absolutely prohibiting the catching, gathering, buying, and shipment of live fishes and marine coral resources by any means, including those lawfully executed or done in the pursuit of legitimate occupation, the ordinance had overstepped the reasonable limits and boundaries of its reason duetri, meaning the reason or justification for existence. People of the Philippines vs. Bergara On July 4, 1992, a team composed of a deputized fish warden and the president of Leyte Fish Warden and some police officers were on board Bantay Dagat, a pump boat and a preventive patrol along with the municipal water fronting Barangay Baras and Kanlahog of Palo Leyte. When he had chance of a fishing boat, the boat had on board the accused Vergara. A team saw the accused threw into the sea about the battle known in the locality as Badel, after which an explosion occurred. When the accused surfaced, they were caught red-handed with fish catch. The four accused were apprehended and taken by the patrol team to the Bantay Dagat stations at Baras and later to the police station in Palo Leyte. His son versus Court of Appeal. In September 1992, the Philippine National Police Maritime Command of Puerto Princesa City, Palawan received reports of illegal fishing operations in coastal waters of the city. In response to these reports, the city mayor organized Task Force Bantay Dagat to assist the police in the detection and apprehension of violators of the law on fishing. Task Force Bandai Dagat reported to the PNP Maritime Command that the boat and several small crafts were fishing by Moro Army within the shoreline of Barangay San Rafael of Puerto Precisa City. The police apprehended the petitioners. In light of these findings, the PNP commands the current actions or proceedings against the owner of the operations of the F.B. Robinson, the first fisherman fishing industries incorporation. Presented by her and petitioner Richard Hizon, the boat captain Silvero Gargar, and the boat engineer Ernesto Aldaya. Laguna Lake Development Authority versus Court of Appeals et al. Republic Act Number no. 4850 created the Laguna Lake Development Authority and granted it the authority to manage the environmental resources in the Laguna Lake area. However, with the promulgation of the Local Government Code of 1991, the municipalities in the Laguna Lake region interpreted the provision of this law to mean that the newly passed law gave municipal governments the exclusive jurisdiction to issue fishing privilege and fish pen permits within their municipal waters. Later on, the LLDA or the Laguna Lake Development Authority issued a notice to the general public that Illegally constructed fish pens, fish cages, and other aquaculture will be demolished. The affected fish pen owners filed injunction cases against LLDA before the various RTCs.